So we started our migration early in uh, 2017. But even having good reasons to do the migration, it was still a major challenge. You do not want to change horses midstream. You've got enough other stuff going on. We had a lot of services live already at this point in production and under active development. And when I say under active development, this is a diagram that's attempting to work out all the functional stuff we wanted to deliver last year. We had five teams working on it. There were a lot of interdependencies. It was uh, extremely complicated. And then we had a migration team trying to move everything underneath it. So you can imagine that was quite uh, difficult. And we had to run things in parallel for quite a long time. Because when you're building from scratch, you often want to build a platform with a few services in it. But actually, we wanted to know whether we could uh, run our complicated routing and failover logic on Kubernetes, which meant having to migrate quite a lot of things. This took a while, which meant we ran in parallel for a long time. In fact, we did well over 2,000 code releases while running at least part of the stack in parallel. That's about a, about a year. And um, even if it takes 10 minutes extra to deploy to your two parallel stacks, that's 47 working days of extra deployment time. Uh, if you've got 2,000. At scale, these things start to add up. So when we started doing this, we needed to make some decisions about how we were going to run stuff in parallel, how to make changes for one stack or for the other, how to keep things in sync between the two stacks. So the first decision was about where do we commit code? So we started off by putting all of our changes for Kubernetes onto a separate branch, which kept the work the migration team were doing separate from the work everyone else was doing. But that doesn't work well if those services are also getting active code changes for other reasons, because eventually you have to merge the code. And the feature team doesn't want to have to merge it, because it's effectively paying a tax on all their development. And the migration team has no idea what this new feature stuff is anyway. So ultimately, all code had to go onto the master. And any difference in behavior between the old and the new stack had to be done through configuration or code path changes based on environment. So then we had a single Docker image for a particular version of the code, and we expected people to deploy it to both of the stacks. So the next thing after that was about deployment. How are we going to do the deployment? If you have completely separate deployment mechanisms, you will end up with inconsistencies because someone forgot to do both deployments, either accidentally or deliberate because they're focused on what they want to achieve. With 150 services, you can't see at a glance whether that's happening. Um, but running a single deployment pipeline is risky, because you really don't want to block an emergency deployment for a live issue because your new and experimental stack had a problem. So what we actually did was we had two pipelines that were kicked off by the same single action, which was uh, tagging a release in GitHub. Uh, the last step, step of both deployments was manual. Someone had to click a button and say, I want this to go live. Uh, and we just wrote a script that we ran manually. We didn't get around to automating it that just said, what are the versions of, of the services in both environments? And then one of our developers ran it every morning and then would tell people where they hadn't actually finished their deployment. The approaches we chose meant we were deploying functional changes into both of our stacks, and we were deploying things to production when it was really only a change for running Kubernetes. And we didn't want to double the amount of testing uh, that we did, because testing in microservices quite, can take up quite a lot of time anyway. Um, so Basically, what we did was prioritize the live stack. Uh, that's what we cared about, and we relied on automation to help us reduce the risk. So we already had a service that would monitor when content was published. So someone publishes an article, it would monitor to make sure that article made it through to all of the necessary uh, data stores and APIs. So we just ran that in both stacks, and then we added a small service in our live stack that just forwarded all the real live production publishes to our other stack. So we'd know if there was any difference between the two. Was it failing to publish in one of the two stacks? Well, there's probably something wrong with our configuration or our routing. 